Welcome to our podcast. I'm Jess. I'm Mandy. And we are Drama Bonded, a podcast where we bond over the drama and trauma in the Bachelor multiverse and throughout Western pop culture. Hi. Hello. How are you? I'm doing all right. Uh, I'm just feeling super distracted because Vanderpump Rules is the only thing that's in my brain right now. (laughs) Yeah, I feel really bad. You (laughs) and I keep having conversations about other things, and then I will completely interrupt with, oh my God, I cannot even. And I feel like a bad friend because I can't even focus on real life right now because I'm so consumed with this drama. Yeah, like even before we sat down to talk, all we were talking about was Vanderpump Rules. And I was like, we need to talk about what we're talking about on our podcast episode. Meh. Yeah. (laughs) And normally I love talking about The Bachelor and I'm really excited about it. But you guys, this Vanderpump Rules drama is just- Next level. Yeah. And, you know, we're going to take the the next three episodes to- talk through all of our Vanderpump feels after this. We have a plan. We do. We have a plan. I'm very excited for that plan. Um, Well, I guess we'll try and keep it within like the realm of an hour long, but don't be surprised if those episodes go a little over. (laughs) Because all day, every day, we are just talking about VPR. Um, In other news, it is our 20th episode. 20. I feel like that's kind of a big deal for us. Like, we really, we've committed. We've done it. I'm proud of the work we're doing. Dude, hell yeah. That's a lot. 20 is a lot. It is a lot. Um, And especially that we're sticking with it through sort of our our unofficial spring, summer break until charity season starts. That's commitment, you guys. Yeah. And it's been an absolute joy. Like, I'm really, I'm loving it. I think that it's it's fun to have space to talk about the things we enjoy. Yeah, and I think um, we are going to try to gain some more listeners in the next little bit, so watch out for those efforts. And if there's anything you can do to help us kind of spread our podcast project, we would love that. Yeah, because I know this probably comes as like, a really big surprise, but the industry is really oversaturated with podcasts. So it's a little hard to uh, break through and get attention. Um, I mean, honestly, we just do this because we like it. But if we could enjoy doing it and maybe have more listeners and potentially make a little money from some sponsors, you know, that would be even better. Yeah, even just breaking even on the cost of doing the podcast because it turns out it's not free to do anything. So Yeah. And and we'd really just like to keep going. I don't I don't think this needs to become our day job. But I yeah, it would be really cool to have a little bit of ability to make some money and maybe cover more things. Yeah. There's so much out there that we want to talk about, but we just want to see potentially where we can take it. Um so we're just gonna push it a little bit and see what happens. Yeah. I, I, exactly. So help us out. We love you. We'd appreciate it. <laughs> it means a lot. Uh, speaking of pushing, let's push some candy reviews. Whoa. I finally think that I, I did well this week and I can't even take credit for it. Uh, a really dear friend of mine that I've known since 2009 when I started working, um, right after my divorce, this was somebody who was so lovely and just really showed up for me, fantastic friend. And she she moved away to Oregon and she came through just a couple weekends ago. And it was such a pleasure to see her. And she brought with her some lavender sea salt caramels from Lily Bell Farm up in Oregon. And you can hop online. They've got a little shop that you can buy from. Um, and if you know anybody who likes caramels, I've got to say these were pretty fantastic. They weren't overly florally. The caramel was really soft. The the sea salt was the right amount. It was the perfect balance, to be honest. Yeah, it was delicious. So I'm looking forward to eating another one after this episode. No, we're just sitting here staring at them. It's incentive (laughs) to get going and do the thing so that we can eat the caramels. Yeah, but dark chocolate, um, a lavender caramel with sea salt on top. Yeah, and mm, the lavender is perfect. 
Yeah. It is not too much. Because sometimes that stuff can just like punch you in the face and you're like, I don't want to chew on flowers or perfume, but this isn't that. Perfectly balanced. Lily Bell Farms. Yeah. Well, thank you to your friend and thank you for sharing that with me. It's way more fun when you can share these things with somebody and with lots of somebody's. Yeah, go check them out, guys. Definitely. Uh, so this week, on our 20th episode, we want to cover some – Things bachelors. Yeah, we're bringing it back things. to Batch Nation. Yeah, so we've got some heavy things. We're probably going to start with uh, Mike Fleiss, who is the creator of The Bachelor, leaving the show. And then we've got a couple fun things after. Yeah, we're going to start heavy and then go lighter. Yeah, so bear with us. It gets better. But, but also, I just want to say that I am hopeful that the heaviness will eventually lead to better changes in the show. Yeah. So, like, I'm optimistic that this is going to mean that maybe there is change in the franchise and that they will start prioritizing some of the work that they needed to do a long time ago. For sure, that we can kind of move away from the heteronormative whiteness that just invades this show so perpetually. And yes. we can maybe get some more interesting television, more unique people. I don't know. Yeah. I'm cautiously optimistic yeah like we'll see we're not gonna hold our breath but um if it's going to happen now is when it's gonna happen i think absolutely um and i know that the, the there's this idea that like change like this can take time but i also feel like i read that there have been like 60 seasons of all sort of the the bachelor bachelorette bachelor in paradise shows so like while change takes time, we also know what's not been working. So yeah, we've had a lot of time and not much change has happened. So I guess I'm I'm not really willing to be given too much grace on time. I better I personally want to see change start coming down the pipeline. <laughs> I mean, so according to Nick Vial, now that Mike Fleiss is gone, I guess other people left too. Um the entire uh production team of the show is has changed. Right. And so I I would be surprised if we didn't start seeing or feeling that change pretty obviously this season. I'm just interested to see in what that change looks like. Yeah, me too. Um, I think there's a lot of different directions that can be taken. Uh, as part of our research for this, I listened to a uh, Michelle Young interview on Two Black Girls, One Rose. And Michelle and, and the, I'm sorry, I don't remember their names, um, the podcast host, I'm just blinking. That's a really fun podcast. Definitely recommend it. They talked about it's not even just casting black leads. They need to diversify in so many different directions. You know, it's not, it's just not black people. It's, it's body diversity, hair diversity. You know, there's there's so many roots. We need more Asian people. We, you know, we just need representation from all around. Yeah. And so, you know, just giving us a token black person as a lead is not going to be sufficient. We really do need to see change, not only like on the show specifically, but also just in the way the show conducts itself and, and handles things. But also setting up those leads to succeed in a way that is like, the production team has done the research and is supplying a cast that aligns with the, the lead's values. Um, like, for example, the um, the issues we had on Rachel L Lindsay's season with the white guy who... Oh, my God. He was clearly, was racist, clearly racist and egging on black yes, men in the show. Perpetuating this angry black man narrative. And so it's also just about you know, the show being invested enough in the lead to set them up to succeed and to find a partner that aligns with who they are. Absolutely. And, you know, the reason we're bringing this up is Mike Fleiss left the show. Um, he originally tried to spin it as though it was just time after 20 years, but it's come out through sources like Variety posted an article um, or published an article saying that he actually was under investigation by HR for creating hostile work environments for people who either suggested diversity, brought in diverse candidates, yeah, um, was making racist comments. Uh, he would lash out at people, bully people. Yeah, it was clearly a, a, not a good environment. And, you know, I think that's really evident by the way that the show has 
played out. That's totally. I I believe that those things were happening. Um, you know, I I I didn't read anywhere that they that they had released the conclusion of any HR investigation. But I think him leaving as that inve- investigation concludes kind of tells us all we need to know on top of the fact that his record really just speaks for itself. Yeah, so they made it sound like he was just leaving because it was time, but then there was all this stuff <laughs> kind of in the in the backstory that nobody was talking about. I kind of want to read a quick quote that someone said. Um, yeah. People said he would retaliate against people for having minorities and black people on the show. He favored certain people over other people. Um, and this says someone who was willing to talk to the person doing the investigation. And they also said he would say minorities don't get ratings. Well, and I believe that. I listened to another podcast um, called Love to See It, and they were talking about Chris Harrison one time coming on for an interview, and Chris Harrison point blank like almost said that exact same thing and was just like, well, but we need people to watch the show. So the but- fact that it's also being backed up by Chris Harrison like tells you that that is, in fact, the culture of the show. I kind of, yeah, I want to like touch on that because even though maybe – Data wise, it shows that minorities don't get ratings. You also have to consider the fact that this show has been entirely based on a white cast and like white love stories. And so, who is going to be watching this show to, you know, for that content is probably primarily a white audience and a white Christian audience. Exactly. Yeah. And so, I'm just saying, like, you have to, you have to be willing to invest and build a show that supports a different style of audience and culture and leads like that is a slow build you know what I mean that you're not gonna have one black bachelor and all of a sudden have like get great ratings because you decided to do this thing like you have to be fucking willing to put in the time and effort to create change in your show and and um I guess be appealing to a different audience well right and not only that but when we did not get Rachel Lindsay season until 2017, did The Bachelor start in what 2002, 2004? Yeah, I mean, so yeah, you just try and throw one black person in there that late in the game, and you know, if the ratings are bad, like what, yeah, what the fuck did they expect to have happen? And I will also say, this is a really good thing, too, for people, you know, audiences who consume reality TV to keep in mind, like, why do you tune out on those episodes? Why is that less appealing to you? Like, these are really important questions, too, as an audience that we really need to look inward and be like, why why are those seasons less interesting? And, you know, I think that's really telling. It's not just the show that needs to make a cultural shift. It's also, you know, us societally need to change the way that we view these things and respect the fact and understand that, whiteness should not be the only thing that we see and we should be invested in black love or Asian love or, you know, any sort of, you know, fat love. I don't care. Like there's more to life than yourself. Also, there is so much more pressure on um, black leads than there are on white leads. <laughs> yes. Like they, and, you know, like maybe their seasons come off as more serious or less dramatic or what have you. But that is because they know – that there is so much pressure on them to play a certain role and to come across a certain way because they are the token black lead. So they have to they have to just play the part really well. And so right. I, you, they can't play into the trope of angry black men or aggressive black women. Yes. They have to be so careful. And so they they can't be as dramatic because that will reflect on them being a black person and not just them being an individual. Well, I also think so in listening to Michelle Young's interview, she did bring that up. And I thought that was such an interesting point, too, on her part of like she got her season right after George Floyd being murdered. So it's coming in with that. It's coming in on the heels of Rachel Kirkconnell. And there was she said there was absolutely pressure to make sure that her season didn't lend itself to even more scandal or hurting a population of people. And that it's also not the responsibility of black people to fix these problems. And yet when they go on these shows, 
how can they not talk about race? How can they not address these things? Like it's too prevalent, you know, it's too prevalent a part of their lives, unfortunately, to just sweep it under the rug. They can't do it. And that sucks. And so I know people get upset. They're like, oh, it doesn't all doesn't always have to be about race. But like, cool, when it doesn't have to be about race, it won't be about race. But until then, like this is unfortunately the things we're going to have to engage in. Right. So it's uh, it's a bummer. And, you know, hopefully Mike Fleiss leaving does change things. I know Michelle said that uh, Natasha Parker, Rachel Lindsay, Matt James have all divested themselves from The Bachelor because the show just perpetually does not handle these things correctly. You know, Mandy and I have talked about this. They they just told they didn't address Eric's blackface at all. And they did finally address Greer defending blackface. But it's like it took the only reason they did that was because Michelle went to production and was like, you have to do something about this. And they did. And it's like that's also a really frustrating spot for her to be in to have to to be the voice of reason. Yep. That's not okay. Stop putting the work on black people to solve a problem that is for white people to solve. Or to have Rachel Lindsay come in on how many after the final rows to address to address some like racial topic with Bachelor Nation. Yeah, not her job. <laughs> so it's a, it's a really frustrating thing to witness, but also the fact that things are moving along in a different direction, I think bodes well for the show currently. And Time will tell. Something else I wanted to talk about was, I guess some of the people on the production team was were saying like, how could Flies be ra- racist because he promoted um, a black producer to oh executive God. producer in 2021? And I just want to say that just because one person of color gets promoted doesn't mean that an organization doesn't have like r- racial issues. Yeah, I really encourage people, if you're not familiar with the idea of tokenism, to look that up and to understand what that is. Um, Simply having a person of color or a black person in these positions does not mean that the organization supports diversity or creates an environment where they feel safe and like that that's a good culture for them to be in. And yeah, it's (laughs) and also it took until 2021 this woman, uh, her name is Jody Baskerville, had worked for the show for over 10 years before being promoted to executive producer. That's outrageous. Mediocre white men get promoted all the time. Like, I don't think those guys know what they're actually saying with what they're saying. They think that that's yeah. a, a, a winning thing that Mike Fleiss did. But in reality, like, it's how could just- he be racist? He promoted a black woman. Yeah. Well, sometimes people use <laughs> opportunities like that to save face. Absolutely, they do. And they, it's not about the person at all. Yeah. Um, and it's really too bad that that gets leveraged like that because then I think, too, the dialogue is like, oh, well, you're just doing that. You know, why? that black person probably didn't even deserve that. Like, we're just doing that for the sake of diversity. Like, it's such a bad look. It's just all around a bad move. It's not diversity. It's not. That's not what we mean when we say the show needs to diversify. Yeah. It's been pretty obvious that the show hasn't had a producing team that is prioritizing these changes. And so I'm really, I don't know, like I said, not going to hold my breath, but I really want the franchise to be better and I want them to be better for the cast. And if they're better for the cast, I feel like we get better TV. Absolutely. We get more interesting TV. (laughs) I don't want to keep watching the same story over and over and over. Like, we've been there. We've done that. Do not give me another Clayton. Do not give me another Zach. I don't – we don't need any more Hannah Browns. We just need – give us – give us – there's better out there. Also, the – the – The seasons that have been more unpredictable and have had those kind of curveballs and taken it out of the formula are the seasons that people remember. And we're going to touch on some of those after this. But I just think, like, I wish the show would pay attention to that. Like, when Clayton, not Clayton, gosh, sorry, the other big football white guy. uh, Colton? Colton. Like, when Colton jumped the fence. Or, you know, when Clayton, like, broke up with both Gabby and Rachel, like when at the the same time, yeah, at the same time, when the show kind of 
diverts from its normal path, that's when people freak out and want to watch because it's like, what's happening? This doesn't happen. Like, people are on board. That's the drama. That's the secret sauce. So I wish The Bachelor would kind of lean into allowing contestants to kind of just take the show where it needs to go. Yeah. And I don't know. Yeah, there's ah, there's just so much that can be done. Um, yeah, I don't know if I've really got that much more to add. Yeah, Glad so, Mike Fleiss is gone. Bye. Yeah. Okay. Also, I mean, that guy abused his wife. So. Right, I was going to say that. How did he not get fired in 2019 when he assaulted his pregnant wife? He won, He was like pushing her against the wall, yelling at her to have an abortion. You guys, I'm sorry, but when you enact violence on somebody, you don't deserve to be in a position of power and produce a television show that millions of people watch. You just don't. Like, I'm sorry, you can go... I don't know. You, I, I don't even want to insult lower level jobs. Like, I don't even know where a piece of shit like that goes, but he doesn't deserve to project any of his morals, values, voice through a television show. Yes. Period. That's just, we're done. But he didn't get fired for that. He got to continue. And it is kind of shocking to me that people would defend somebody like that and be like, he's a nice guy. Yeah, he's never been rude to me. Okay, well, like, read cool, the bro. fucking news. <laughs> yeah, like... And that's such that's a, that's a really great abuser tactic is to really be over the top great to people that you're not abusing to discredit the victims of your abuse. So, yeah, not a fan. Boo. Goodbye, good riddance. So long, farewell, Alvita adieu. I don't know what how that song goes. So way to go. <laughs> Just kind of uh-huh, uh-huh. that's from <laughs> Send <a> Music. <laughs> Anyways, um, let's move on to something more fun. Yeah. Okay. Do we want to start with our iconic moments? Yeah. Okay. So we came up with an idea to trade off um, top five most iconic Bachelor moments. Um, None of mine are from Bachelor in Paradise. I kept mine entirely from The Bachelor and Bachelorette. I don't know what Jess did, but we're going to take turns um, saying our top five. Yeah, I love that. So do you want to start or do you want me to? Um, I can start because one lives rent-free in my head. Okay. All the time. I uh, And I didn't even watch this season. So this is from Bachelor in Paradise. I'm not sure which season. But uh, a sound camera guy named Ryan Putz, before they started filming Bachelor in Paradise, everybody is like in hotels and the way that it kind of works is they like let people into the resort slowly, depending on like who exits and to just kind of mess with the overall like dynamic of the group. And this Ryan Putz uh, decided that he had a thing for Michelle. I didn't get her last name. And they were maybe having sex in her room. Canoodling. Canoodling. Yeah, there was something going on. <laughs> You, and I, sus. I talk about this all the time, but here's the actual details. And a producer came and knocked on the door and Ryan panicked and jumped off the hotel room balcony, shattering his foot. What a dummy. And they recreated it <laughs> on the show. Chris Harrison, just like they couldn't let it go. And I think like kind of what makes it so iconic, and you can YouTube this. I have like watched this so many times, is that uh, he is laying there in bed with his foot like up, you know, stereotypical, like <laughs> up in a cast. He's in the hospital and they make him say his name for the camera and just absolutely shame the shit out of him for having done what he did. Well, he should be. That's so embarrassing. I know. Like, why did you not just like hide? Why did you jump off the balcony? I don't know. So that just kind of kills me. What a moment. And leave it to The Bachelor to or Bachelor in Paradise to recreate, you know, a dramatic reenactment of what happened. That did happen on another season. Not that the producer jumped out of the balcony and broke his foot, but the girl who was on, she was a contestant on The Bachelor, like uh, Chris Harrison, like goes up and addresses, like, I think you've been having relations with one of someone on our production team and asks her to leave on the show. Didn't Ivan also get in trouble for that? Like, oh, I don't remember. 
Yeah. This happens a lot on Bachelor in Paradise. It's messy. It's fun. I don't feel like they give people any wiggle room to make mistakes, for better or worse. It does make for interesting TV. It kind of makes sense that people, like, maybe have crushes or, you know, feelings for their producers because of how much they are with these people all the time. Yeah. You know? Like, I don't know. I kind of get it. It'd be weird if you had a producer that was the opposite sex that you were attracted to that was, like, kind of helping you throughout this journey. For sure. I don't know. I don't know how producers didn't have the hots for Greg Grippo when uh, that was all going on. my God. (laughs) Right? It makes sense. Yeah. I'm with you. I see how it happens. And especially on lower stakes things like Bachelor in Paradise where there's just no guarantee that you're even going to get onto the beach. Yeah. I mean, respect. You just take whatever opportunity comes your way. Yeah. (laughs) Even if it's a guy named Ryan Putz. Yeah. I'll take what I can get. Okay. All right. My um okay, my number 1 is it's kind of twofold. So the moment that I remembered in my head is there's a scene on Hannah Brown season where she has broken up with Luke Parker and he won't leave and they're at a rose ceremony and because he won't leave, she takes the little like pretty stand table that the roses are on and like walks it over so that he can no longer be included in the rose ceremony. Yes. And then, and like, then there was the moment between them. I'm kind of lumping it into one where he basically tells her, like, if you sleep with anyone else from the show, then I would leave. And she says, um, I have had sex and Jesus still loves me. And from obviously how you feel, me fucking in a windmill, you probably want to leave. And my husband would never say that to me. Yeah. But I just love, um, you know, like something about Hannah Brown is that she was very adamantly like religious, Christian, but she really stood up to any form of slut shaming. And just her combination of Willingness to call him out, but also be like, but Jesus still loves me, and I fucked in a windmill, <laughs> and I'm going to move this rose stand so you can't yeah. be in this rose ceremony. <laughs> Moving the rose stand, I did watch that too. Also, I think a fun fact, I think this is the guy, this guy went on to be a pretty well-known CrossFitter. Oh, I think that's true. For mayhem. Yeah, yeah. he was definitely a CrossFitter. Ew, that tracks actually completely. Yeah. Um. Boo. We're not, not a Luke Parker fan, but huge fan of Hannah Brown season and huge fan of Hannah Brown for calling out the bullshit. Hell yeah. We love that. No slut shaming. We're, we're past that, you guys. Enough. Um, mine is, I was trying to decide which one I should do next. Um, I think Clayton screaming <laughs> that he loves Rachel. <laughs> And then chooses Susie. Like that just was, I think we all kind of just thought it was going to be Rachel because they're like sexy whispering to each other. There's all this chemistry. And then he totally thought it was going to be Rachel. And then he does that. And you're like, okay. Yeah. It's Rachel. So in love. I love you, Rachel. And then, yeah, doesn't choose Rachel, which was just bananas. Like, what, Clayton? Whoa, guy. What? I I wish we had been podcasting. What a season that would have right. been to cover. Because, man, I still think about that. I do think that that was purposefully edited so that we did think it was going to be Rachel. And then the whole Susie thing was more of a curveball. But, wow, that was that was a weird season. So weird. So, so weird. But yeah, I just, I see the whole thing. Rachel standing up on that balcony, Clayton walking backwards in his sweat, swaggering. So much of that just is like. Oh my God. Like when he tells Gabby and Rachel that he has been intimate with both of them and that Susie is gone and then they both still stay. And they're like crying on the steps and like they're in this like really cavernous building and the echoing of them crying and Clayton's just standing there. And then they stay, and then he breaks up with both yes. of them at the same time. <gasps> How does that even happen? Dude, that was that was a lot. Okay. All right. My next one. This is a deep cut. This is from an older season. But um, <laughs> so you know how Ari ended up breaking up with Becca, 
and choosing uh, Lauren. Mm -hmm. Well, that was a big deal, but he wasn't the first person that did it. So I'm citing the first Bachelor that did the switcheroo, and that is Jason Mesnick. And he did it on the final row, after the final rose. He comes out with his winner. He breaks up with her on after the final rose and says that he wants to be with someone else on the show. Holy shit. Yeah, so it wasn't, like, at least, I guess, Ari and Becca had, like, kind of an intimate house where there wasn't an audience, but this guy did it in front of a live audience. Wow. Wow. But he's still with um, the woman that he chose to be with. Is this Womack? No, Jason Mesnick. Mesnick, you said that. I get those two confused. They both have. So he's still with Molly, who was, I think, maybe the runner-up on the show. But yeah. Right. So I guess in the end, it's good that he switched. But to do that to the girl that he proposed to on television, that's pretty fucked up. Yeah. Well, I actually don't know if they had live audiences back then, but I know that it was like, you know, the summary of it, it served the purpose of what after their final rose is now. Absolutely. No, that makes sense. It, the, the intent stands. Um, well, I guess that kind of steals the thunder from mine. <laughs> Because to me, I mean, sort of two in one, you know, Lauren asking Ari when he's breaking up with her if he's being serious right now and just the total confusion on her face as he says that he's choosing Becca. Oh, Ari. Was classic to me. Like, she was so pissed. I think his family, like, talked him into picking Becca. I think they did, too. And, I mean, and I don't want to diminish any woman whatsoever. But like, I understand how a family could look at Becca and be like, oh, that's somebody we would want our son to be with. But like, Lauren was clearly so head over heels, absolutely in love with Ari. And Ari clearly, clearly felt the same. So like, that just sucked that he gave in to pressure from his family or that his family felt the need to like, pressure him at all. I don't know. That was weird. Her angry face just knocks around in my head from time to time. (laughs) Um, I'm glad they're together. They have kids. Yeah. They're they're an obnoxious couple, but like good for them. They found love. Exactly. Like despite the, I don't know how horrifying it is to watch. Like at least these people are still with the person that they. Well, and Becca is all the drama for now with Thomas. They're expecting a baby. baby. So exciting for them. So like she's good. Everything's fine. All is well that ends well. But man, what a thing to go through on television. Yeah. And I guess similarly, him proposing to Lauren at AFR after the final rose was also just really cringy to me. Oh, yeah. Ick. Like, they just were trying to save face and all of that. Don't do things like that in public. Well, like, he, I think he was, like, double downing. Like, no, I um, I plan on marrying her, but it was still a bad look. Yeah. You, you can have public proposals. Just don't do them as retaliation for another bad choice that you might have made. Like, keep stuff private that should be private. <laughs> Agreed. Um, yeah. So that's that one. Okay. Number three. Um, this is also a deep cut. Uh, there was, so before Pilot Pete, there was another pilot that was The Bachelor and his name was Jake Pavelka. This is probably maybe one of the earlier seasons that I remember watching. But uh, Jake Pavelka ended up with kind of a controversial uh contestant and her name was Vienna I don't remember if she was the villain I just know that she wasn't very well liked okay by a lot of the women but so after they end the show and they've chosen each other Chris Harrison does like a separate interview with them because there's so much shit going on about them in the media and basically they break off their engagement and in this interview with Chris Harrison Jake accuses Vienna of selling him out to the tabloids And Vienna goes on to say that he is a fame whore and she accuses him of being emotionally abusive when they were in a relationship. Like, I remember watching the interview and I think that was my probably my first, that was probably my first exposure to what reality television can be. You know what I mean? Like how explosive and angry and ugly. And I think I was kind of shocked, but I also was, I was just loving it. (laughs) So I... I don't really remember Jake's season very much. I do remember thinking that he was kind of a sociopath, and I felt really bad for Vienna in the interview. But 
Wow, what a wild ride. And that definitely is something that stands out to me in the very beginning of my relationship with The Bachelor. That's pretty cool. And for that being an earlier season to call it emotional abuse, I feel like that, I mean, it's clearly not a new thing, but I do feel like that's only gained a lot of traction recently Yeah, within the past few years. So good for her for being able to call out that bullshit and selling him out. I love a takedown of a, of a shitty person. So we'll, yeah. we'll take that. But randomly, JoJo Fletcher's family is like good friends with Jake Pavelka. So when JoJo was the bachelorette, he like made an appearance to like wish her luck. Ew. Like, really? Why do we have to have this guy back? An example of probably, yeah. that was probably Mike Fleiss's idea or something. Exactly. <laughs> Ew. Yeah, we're done. Okay. Um, I'm going to be honest, guys. I don't have as many. I, I could not come up with five. I've got one more. That's so okay. Okay. Because I've not watched as much and I didn't want to just like pull something out of a hat. Um, I'll think about Bachelor in Paradise though, moments. Okay. Uh, but one for me that really stands out as being like incredibly iconic is Caitlin sleeping with Nick Vial. And I hated that she got slut shame for that and that people were all up in arms about that. But you guys, premarital sex is okay. And it doesn't even have to be for the sake of deciding if you want to marry somebody. You can just have sex for fun. And if the moment is right and you've got two people who are into it, great. Have sex. Enjoy. You are two attractive people. Like, come on. Even if you're not attractive. Like, I don't care. People can have sex. And I just thought that was so cool. And she really, she defended herself. And she she did not deserve the hate that she got for it. But I also love that she called it out. And she was like, absolutely not. This is unacceptable. Like, I get to do this. And you don't get to tell me that I'm a slut. You don't get to give me death threats. You don't, you don't get to treat me this way because I had sex. The show ends in an engagement. If people want to have sex, they can have sex. Absolutely. And I just, I thought that was so cool. And I loved her for doing that. And I, I didn't realize that Hannah Brown took accountability, not accountability. That makes it sound like you did something wrong, that she owned it too. And was like, fuck you for trying this. So like, I, I, yeah. Good for Hannah Brown. Good for Caitlin. Yeah. I especially, uh, I mean, good for both of them. I think coming from like a religious background, oh, I yeah. just have like so much more respect for Hannah Brown also being like, dude, and Jesus still loves me. Because he does. <laughs> like way to throw that out there to the Christian fan base. <laughs> yeah. That's something that people need to hear. Love um, that. Well, that's a perfect connection to my number four, which is Nick being the runner up again Ugh. on Caitlyn's season. He looked so so dejected and like I mean rightly so I do okay so first of all he so Nick's first season was he was runner-up on Andy I think it's Dorfman's Dorfman yeah season um and then so the next bachelorette is Caitlin Bristow and he I guess him and Caitlin had been kind of in communications before her season um, and then when her season started, he realized, like, I have a thing for this girl. Like, I don't want to just, like, not see her again and have her end up with someone else. So he shows up in the middle of her season, again, becomes the villain on the show because all these guys are like, what the fuck? <laughs> um, and so then, you know, Nick is the guy that she sleeps with, more drama. But in the end, you know, it's funny. I remember watching the season. And even though Caitlin and Sean have such, like, a really weird, strong connection, like, I kind of was like, there's no way that she would take Nick all the way to the end. And not choose him? And not choose him. Like, I really had that thought of, like, she wouldn't do that. Like, that's crazy. And then when she did it, <laughs> I think Nick was also as surprised as I was. <laughs> but I really, yeah, he did a really good job of kind of calling her out and being like, like, how can you bring me all the way here and do this? And I just remember being like, really impressed with the way that he kind of owned it. And like, he was so eloquent in that last conversation between them. And in the end, he has said multiple times how like, even though it was probably the, one of the hardest things he's gone through, he really, in retrospect, like knows that Caitlin totally changed the way he was perceived in Bachelor Nation by giving him the opportunity to like have that conversation. And so, I don't know. I just thought that was a pretty important moment. Yeah. I I agree with that. Um, 
I don't like Nick, so I was fine with that. Sean, though, also ended up being a dud, which is too bad. Yeah. I hated that. I I do think Nick and Caitlin had better chemistry, though, if I'm being honest. Yeah, that's why I didn't really understand. I was surprised, That's why I didn't think she was going to pick Sean. Well, I watched it, obviously, later, and I knew she picked Sean, and I was surprised she picked Sean. Yeah. I rewatched it. With you, well, like we were kind of watching it at the same time. Yeah, and, it's and I was like, like, "How does she pick Sean? Like, it's going to end differently this time. There's no way. Yeah, it she doesn't. she can't pick Sean. She still dumps Nick. But you know, like now she's with Jason and Nick's engaged. Everybody's getting their happy ending. Yeah, Nick's got a very successful podcast. He's he's doing real good for himself. So, and his fiance is gorgeous, smoking. Okay, uh, so do you have another one? No. Okay. No worries. I'm going to go with my fifth. Claire chooses Dale a few episodes into her season and is just like, peace out. I found my guy. I'm leaving. Um, so this is crazy because like even the guys who are on the show can clearly see that she is choosing Dale and they're kind of like, why are we like going on dates with her? Like, <laughs> it, it's it was such an awkward season to watch because it was there were so many ick and cringy moments that you could just tell that she was leaning so heavily into the Dale thing that the guys were like, what the fuck? This is like a waste of our time. But they're still kind of like trying to go through the motions of filming the show. Well, because they're under contract too. It's not like… Right. Uh, yeah, that's such a weird spot to be but in. But then they like basically tell Dale like, she wants to leave with you, so you need to propose to her. And Dale's like, whoa, like, I don't know if I'm ready for that. It's like this weird, I don't know. Ooh. So they leave engaged. Somehow Dale does the thing. And then the guys are like, cool. So what do we do now? And then they bring in Tasha as like the mid-season bachelorette, which I love Tasha, But I can also see, you know, if you're a guy there for one woman and all of a sudden you have to pursue another woman, it's kind of a weird, it's a weird pivot. Oh, absolutely. I have my fifth one. Okay. Piggybacking off of that, you've got Blake Moynes, who was in love with Claire, then is in love with Taysha. And like, as if that's not bad enough, like, sure, yeah, yeah, Jen, like, whatever. He shows up, like, I don't know. what Mid-season. He's he's the Nick on Katie's season. Yeah, and I did watch Katie's season. So he shows up midway through Katie's season and asks to be part of it. And she's like, yeah. And then at the end of it, the guy she really likes leaves. And so she just decides that, sure, I'll get engaged to Blake. And Blake is like, I love this. And I remember his sister being like, Blake, you were in love with Claire. You were in love with Tasha. You're now in love with Katie. Like, hmm, I don't know. I, we're not buying it. And you know what? It's come out that that was, in fact, a fake engagement. And, like, no one's surprised by that. What a weird twist. Like, these people who just sort of perpetually jump from show to show or, you know. Blake just wants exposure. Absolutely. That was all just a ploy to be on TV. Yeah. And they didn't really have any chemistry. Even when they got engaged, I was like, what are we doing here? It was so awkward because Katie's like, surprise, I've been in love with Blake this whole time. And it's like, no, actually, you have not. I was never going to pick Greg. Yeah. Like, nobody believes you. Nobody. You are not fooling us. We know you weren't secretly into Blake the whole time. As evident, too, by when, you know, she came out at after the final rose and just lost it on Greg and was clearly feeling so many emotions and was not happily engaged She was to not Blake. over it. Not even a little bit. That was pretty wild. <laughs> if you're happily engaged, you don't give a shit about the guy that left you, you're like, okay, like, move on. Yeah, and maybe if you do have, like, a thing or two to say, you can say it. But, but in, like, like a, a mature way. Right. She lost it. She was mad. Yeah. She was ready to roast him. There was still a lot of feelings left. Clearly. Yeah. Those were good. Yeah. That was a good fifth one. Well, thanks to you. <laughs> I'd actually kind of forgotten about that. Until you talked about Tasha and Claire. And then I was like, oh, right. I actually have something to contribute here. There you go. This is, see, this is why we do the podcast. Yeah. Um, it makes me excited for charity season. Yes. Oh, my gosh. Her trailer. She looks like such a queen. I loved it. Yeah. 
I it's a fun song. She gets up there in that gorgeous red dress. Ugh, yeah. Yeah, I'm here for it. Okay. This next part, Mandy and I are not trying to be competitive about it, but I think it did get a little competitive. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got this idea. Mandy came up with this to pick five bachelor people that we would be stranded on a desert island with. And We've got the rules that if we're going to go back and forth and if one person picks that person, no, you can't. You they're have, off the table. They're off the table. I, I actually feel like I have enough backups, but I also don't know. So I only have two backups, so we'll see how it goes. I might have to like wing it if I need more. One thing that always surprises me about you and I is we share, I think, a lot of fundamental beliefs and core values and yet I think we get different reads from people from time to time. So yeah. I also could see us not having any crossover. That's true. Or I could see there being complete crossover. I actually like when we have different reads because it makes me be like, oh, I've never really thought that way oh, about that person. Same. But also I just want to point out, I think you have a larger pool to pick from. Because um, I try you know all of my people though. Oh shit. Okay. <laughs> all right. I'm <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um well, since you went number one, I'm going to call number one this time. <laughs> Fine. Okay. Desert Island team for Mandy. My number one pick, Matt James. That's fine. <laughs> My reasonings are very athletic, great to be around, always having a good time. So strong, but also bringing the party. Yeah, I like it. That's he also loves food. So somehow, even though we're limited to desert island cuisine, I feel like he would make whatever we're about to eat exciting. No, no, but what would be your desert island food if you could only eat one food for the rest of your life? I mean, I don't love fish, so it'd probably be coconut. No, I mean, like, you just have, like, an unlimited supply of oh. something in a cooler. <gasps> you you oh. saved the the Yeti cooler as the ship went down, and it's filled with what? I wasn't prepared for this question. Um, well, I'll go first. It would be peanut butter and jelly sandwiches for me. Oh, that's a really smart one. At this point, probably Uncrustables, which I had completely forgotten about until you brought them with us to Joshua Tree and I ate all of yours. And then I have just made Saul buy them from Costco. And now that's what I eat for breakfast. That's so. great. Yeah, um, that's mine. Okay. My desert island food is going to be... I don't know. I don't have an answer. Okay, that's fine. If you have an answer, I want to know what other people's desert island food are. I pick PB&J not because it's actually like a good ratio of macronutrients, which it is, but just mostly because I, I fucking love it. That's fair. PB&J is so good. It's my comfort food. So, okay. So you've got Matt James. Yes. Who's your number one? I'm trying to decide how to do this right now because I like who's my my top player, like who's MVP. And funny enough, I'm gonna have to go with Clayton for similar what? reasons. <laughs> no, 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 dude, laugh it up. But I like, just, that was so left field. Like, what the f hot take? I like Clayton. I think he is a putz. I think he, but I think Clayton has the ability to take in new information and change his mind. He's very athletic. I think he's very agreeable. I think that he would be very useful on a desert island. I think that he and I together would survive and it would be because he's strong. He's taller than me. And I just think we would be able to like work out a situation for like, um, uh, what do you live in? Like a hut? Yeah, a hut. Or yeah, just like a roof over our head. There's a term for this, and I can't think of it. But anyway. I think all the things you said are true. I just, I wouldn't have imagined in my wildest dreams that Clayton would be on your top five. Oh, so really? I'm yeah, so for sure. <laughs> surprised Clayton's right now. athletic. He did sport. He played in yeah, the NFL. Very, yeah. So, like, I feel like he's strong, too, and just really agreeable. Okay. Like. Just like a good person to be around. Absolutely. I, I would get along with Clayton it's, because he's unproblematic in a sense of, like, if you're not dating if he's not dating other women and you we're good okay so, that's fair I, I it's interesting that our number ones were picked for very similar reasons we're not dumb 
Okay. You got to have shelter. <laughs> it's shelter. That's what I was trying to think of. You need shelter. And I think, yes, both Matt James and Clayton <laughs> would be capable of helping with shelter. Okay. My number two, this is um, going to be no surprise to anyone, mainly Jess, is Greg Grippo. Of course. <laughs> because, of you know, if, if I need to, like, have a romantic partner to procreate <laughs> on the <laughs> island. <laughs> Okay, I'm just okay. saying, you know, we need companionship. And out of all the people on Bachelor Nation, Greg is my bachelor companion. I like it. I didn't even think about any of this from this angle. Okay, well, okay. I just have a huge thing for Greg. I know you do. He's pretty hot. Joe, I love you the most. But, you know, this is all hypothetical. Sure. <laughs> Let's hope it's hypothetical. I don't actually want to be trapped on an island with any of these people. Yeah, yeah, But, yeah. like, if we had to, sure. Okay. I am going to come in with another hot take. Oh, God. Who could it be? I don't know. Um, I feel like I would also want Katie Thurston. I knew you were going to put her on your desert. Did you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Guys, I am a Katie fan, and I know that that is not everybody's. My island is just going to be Bachelor hot takes. Um, I think she's good for morale. I think she would just be somebody who could like really hype people up and, you know, we need that. You just need somebody that's going to keep the team going. And I, I think she could do some stand-up nights. Yeah. She's, she's gotten better at that. She's definitely pursuing a career as a stand-up comedian. And I respect that. Women okay. comedians. So like morale, it's, I, it's needed. I'm definitely not a Katie fan, but I know that Jess is a fan. And so I can see like, you know what's funny is I actually had a harder time picking the women to be on my island than the men. And so I think Katie's a – she's a strong contender for a, having a – being one of the women on your team. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Next. I'll do a woman next since you just did a woman. Um, my first female pick is Rachel Lindsay. I love it. I I waffled hard on Rachel Lindsay. I like went back and forth. I was like, ah, yeah. So tell me why. Um, well, she is athletic and all those things, but I also just like that she's like willing to talk about reality television and politics. Yeah. Good balance, right? So she'll talk about all the things. And I think she'll just kind of like call people out on their bullshit. You're killing me. You and I are so similar. So <laughs> Yeah, I totally, totally agree. And you've got to have good conversation. Yeah, so she's my, I, I just want her there because I want to just hang out with her all the time. Totally. Okay. My third pick, I shit you not. It was a toss up for me and this is kind of cheating. I don't want to ruin things. I'll, I'll come down on the side. But I was torn between Michelle and Kendall for the very same reasons. Okay, Michelle which Young. one did you pick? Because one of them is on my list. <laughs> okay, now that I'm sitting here working through this, oh, they're both good for conversation. I think they're both incredibly interesting and intelligent people, and I need that in my life. You don't want to be the smartest person in the room. I think I'm going to go with Kendall. Fuck. Ah, okay. It's because I think she has a good grasp on wildlife, too. That's and she why would be I very useful. She would know things about the plants and animals. Yeah, she's probably going to prevent me from doing something stupid. Don't eat this because it's poisonous. Yeah, Kendall, Kendall is really smart and I think really engaging and somebody that just would be really fun to hang out with. That's a really good pick. Sorry, man. If we have to overlap on someone, I'm glad it was Kendall. For sure. And actually, I feel like Kendall's really vital. And so we could just both do Kendall because she's got such. No, it's OK. I okay, got backups. Sure. I got backups. You guys, I know I've told you this before, but if you don't follow Kendall on Instagram. She, do it. She's so fun. She posts. She posts stuff. She's got great fashion um, and she's got a wiener dog. But then also she posts really cool, informative videos on animals, bugs. It's just it's fun. It's good content. Like as, if. If I'm going to follow somebody on Instagram, I want to be yeah, learning. Yeah, she could have her own PBS show. For sure. And she's very easy on the eyes. She is 100% my type. Yeah, she I looks would, like a Disney princess. I would date Kendall. So that's also, I mean, she probably doesn't swing that way, but like that would also be my person of like interest. Okay. So, I like it. Sorry. Um, well, 
my number four is Jacob, a.k.a. Tarzan. No, that was mine. <laughs> I knew that was coming to you. That's fair. So here we go. We both did it to each other. Okay, my, Jacob's on my list. My reasonings for Jacob is I feel like he's um, – everyone loves him. Also, you know, if the man is willing to sell his sofa – to like pay his bills. I just feel like those are qualities that we need on the desert island. You know what yeah. I mean? He's a hustler. He is. And he's somebody who will work out with you. And he's very humble. He is. He's, oh my God. Yeah. I kind of thought that that might be where some of our overlap comes in. Um, because, yeah, he's a gem. I also just felt like he was one of the least problematic people on the last season. I mean, I know he really like did Jill dirty by trying to be with, um, Who's the girl that dated Logan for a while? Kate. Kate. So, you know, there was the Kate-Jill triangle. But he was very upfront and honest with Jill. Yeah. And I feel like that is sort of the name of the game of the show, right? Like, yeah. if you're not really feeling it, you're well within your rights to, like, pursue relationships elsewhere. I don't think he wasn't secretive about it. He was upfront. Yeah. He was apologetic. Like, he... Sometimes people are going to get hurt in this stuff. And if you're going to be hurt, I mean, Jacob's not a bad guy to be hurt by. Yeah, at least he was honest and wasn't like playing a game with Jill's heart, you know? For sure. Oh, yeah, there you go. Okay. Okay. I did not have a backup for Jacob. I'll figure it out. <laughs> um. Okay, I'm going to go Andrew S., Oh, that's a really good one. I almost put him on mine. Yeah, I feel like ultimately that like he would also be a really good island person. I think he's very funny. I think he's also he seems really sensitive and like you could sit down and like really hash out your feelings with him and he'll do the same. So you totally. can just have like a reciprocal like I don't know. He's going to be the person that like, you know, you wake up for morning coffee and you you just need to be vulnerable. I feel like Andrew S is your guy. Absolutely. He just and and he's still gonna be somebody dependable and like do the work to to keep everybody alive. Yeah. I envision this kind of being like survivor, you know, and everybody's gotta do their part. And Andrew S is somebody who's gonna do his part. Yeah, he's definitely a team player. For sure. He is yeah, yeah. Okay. That was a good pick. Thanks. He was almost on my list. Okay, my last pick is. Becca, oh, sorry, I should say Becca, Becca Martinez. Yeah, <laughs> Becca. <laughs> because she's like, I don't know if you follow her on Instagram. Oh, yeah, I do. She's going to eat those rabbits. Yeah, so, but she's posting about how, you know, her, her kids' pet rabbits, they're going to eat them, and she has conversations with her kids about it, and it's, oh, my gosh, you guys, people blow up her comments being so pissed off about these meat rabbits, and I'm like, first of all, why do you follow her if you're so offended by her lifestyle? But also, I just fucking love that she was on The Bachelor and now she's posting about her kids' meat rabbits. I will be perfectly honest. I saw that post and I did not see the rabbits. And I was like, this is a weird thing to say about your kids. <laughs> like, I know she's joking, but like, and it took me so long, too long to realize that there were rabbits in that photo. And then she was talking about eating the rabbits and not her children. She was not going to eat her children. Yeah. But also, I I'm mean, with you. That's homesteading. That's also really smart because, like, she's got the ability to, like, she's got some knowledge on how to live off the land. Yeah. Like, she's resourceful. So. Oh, shit. I feel like that's a really smart move. You know, I'm, I, I will admit, I mean, I could, okay, if I'm starving, I could kill a rabbit. But if Becca's there and she would do it for me, I would prefer that. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. This is why I have Clayton because I could just be like, my guy, I can't. I'm going to be traumatized the rest of my life if I have to do this. So you have to do it. That's fair. And Clayton I think he would, would do that for you. I know. That's good guy Clayton. Like, yeah. I think, I think he would. So that's my person that's going to have to kill wildlife. <laughs> Meanwhile, I have Becca. <laughs> that's okay. She'll do it. She's good. Also, didn't Andrew play sports? Um, I need yeah. athletic people to catch fish with stick spears because I have no Andrew ability. Andrew played football on a European team. And Matt James also played. Um, I know he played college football, but I think he was also maybe like, oh, I don't remember if it was him or Tyler who was on the Baltimore Ravens like backup. Oh, oh, yeah. You're roster right. Or whatever. Sorry, I, I don't speak football. So don't 
be mean. <laughs> no one come at us. <laughs> um, yeah, no, that's I like it. Becca's a good choice though for that. Like, hmm. Okay. Okay, I'm really interested to know what your number five is. Well, <laughs> I don't know. Now it's a toss up again because I only had two back. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> One of them is not going to be controversial. Oh, man. Dude, I think I, think I need, because I can't have you, so I got to have a best friend on the island. And I think that's going to be Gabby Windy. <gasps> Wow, what a pick. Oh, my gosh. I can't actually see her being very useful. She would not. No, I think she'd be a colossal pain in the ass. Yeah, she would. But at the same time, Gabby makes me laugh. Like, Katie's kind of there for everybody to, like, collectively, like, roast all of us. But Gabby is somebody that I personally find so hilarious that, like, I definitely need somebody that can just be an absolute goon with like, okay she's, that's fair she's that's an amazing pick actually i'm really jealous of that one and i'm jealous i didn't really think of her wow okay i feel like both of our teams are pretty solid i do too i figured you and i would do this this is this is epic <laughs> okay and your final pick is wait that was my final oh you did you yeah, did because I, I went first oh becca oh, my god my backups were um well so i had kendall so becca was my backup and then my other backup was Nick Vial. And it was mostly just because I think he would be fun to talk to. I well, know Jess Cotton. doesn't like him, but. That kind of just like makes me just like, ugh. Being stuck on an island with Nick. I I mean, that's how I feel about Katie Thurston. See? Totally fair. Different, yeah. Different favorites. And fun fact, Katie Thurston and Nick Vial do not like each other. Yeah. There is <laughs> beef. <laughs> there is beef. So we're we're on opposite <laughs> sides of that beef camp, but uh, but we can respect each other's opinions. Bottom line, there are people who are on reality TV, so you know we're not going to end our friendship over disliking people on The Bachelor. Hell no. Um, I love that. Yeah, Michelle Young is the one that I still kind of like ultimately regret, but like I, she just got edged out by Kendall. In that, I think Kendall just. It's going to be useful. But Michelle is so smart and somebody that I feel like could like really have engaging conversations with and just, I don't know, you just need somebody smarter than you around. And I'm not sure that I've Kendall smarter than me for sure. I think Kendall provides more island value. That's it. And it's kind of like, that's, that's really where it's at. Yeah. If I had to be friends with somebody in real life, definitely Michelle. Yeah. I think Kendall might drive me a little batty otherwise, yeah. but Kendall, in terms of island yeah. life, is going to be more useful. We did good teams. We did good. Yeah. I'm, I'm satisfied. I do think it's funny that you didn't think of a companion at all the way I did, because like, obviously, I was like, okay, <laughs> Desert Island, me, and Greg. That's my team. But if I have to have other people there to like make it- <laughs> Well, here is just my one more hot take. <laughs> All of these people are very attractive and I would not say no to okay, if sex yeah. was on the table. So like I'm not missing out on loving at okay, all. You made me so, feel better. No, I'm just equal opportunity. I don't know. I feel like it could only maybe get a little dicey if we feel like we do need to procreate. Well, but like to be fair, we probably shouldn't bring kids into a desert island. So I just, I don't know. I think we're good. I'm... There's going to be some drama on your island with Clayton and Gabby. <laughs> I know. That's where that was. That's why I was worried about that. I'm like, Gabby might cl kill Clayton. Yeah, like that, I could count on her for and then, that. And then my whole team is <laughs> fucked because Clayton is an integral part of yeah, this team. Yeah, you're missing your strong athletic guy. Well, I guess Andrew's strong, but, you know, it's just like. Different. I don't think Andrew is somebody that would. I think if I asked Andrew to do something he and I both didn't want to do. I'm not going to convince Andrew to do it. That's fair. Clayton is much more um, persuadable. For sure. And Andrew, it's just going to be rock, paper, scissors. And I don't want to lose that. See, I think Jacob is kind of my Clayton. Absolutely. That is partly why I needed a backup to Clayton. And you took him. <laughs> oh, man. I also think Clayton and Jacob would be a really fun duo. That's, that's fair. I think they would be really funny together. But I think Clayton and Andrew S. would be too, though. I feel pretty confident oh, in yeah. that. They would be a good time. So I'm curious to know, 
Do you think any past leads are going to be on this season of Bachelor in Paradise? There have been rumblings. I know. Because we have multiple people. We have Rachel. We have Gabby. We have Clayton. Clayton. Who else was in there that they talked about? Oh, there was somebody else. Katie. Is Katie Thurston dating anyone, though? No, she's not. And actually, somebody asked. That this is where I got some of my tea, though it's it's like lukewarm at best. Is somebody asked Katie on an AMA if she was planning on going to Bachelor in Paradise, and she said that there were already too many leads <gasps> going. What does that mean? I feel like this would be wild, Dude, but like I know in my Rachel's be- gonna be there. I was gonna say Rachel's going. Uh-huh. I know this is another person that is very controversial in mine and Mandy's Bachelor. Uh, friendship. I I don't dislike Rachel as much as Mandy does. And Rachel just, she, I'm kind of, she's fine. But I bet you Rachel's going to be there. I would love, 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 love for Gabby to be there. And to be honest, I want Clayton to be there too, but I realize oh that is God. a, <gasps> mess. that would be so messy. But wouldn't that be fun? Wait, there was that thing about Rachel and Johnny hanging out. I don't, obviously they're not dating or anything, but that was a thing a while ago. Yeah. Do we think Johnny's going to come back? Well, Johnny needs to do some fucking work on himself. Okay. Look, I think Johnny's a babe. I think that he reminds me a lot of Joe in certain ways, but I think he has some maturing to, to do. I think he needs to have a better understanding of how to respect a woman and- you know, I think Johnny has a big heart, and I think he's been through some shit, but I, I think he needs to, like, see a therapist and do some work. They all do, but yes, Johnny for sure. Um, it's so funny you say that. I think Clayton, and not Clayton's bad qualities, but Clayton's good qualities qualities also remind me of Saul. Yeah. So, like, I'm endeared to him. Exactly. I do feel like Clayton's done the work. I would. I think, I think yes, actually yeah. of any of the leads that I would like to see there, I would really like to see Clayton on Bachelor in Paradise. I want. I want him to be happy. I really do. I also want that for Gabby and Rachel. But I don't know. Part of me also is still kind of maybe holding out hope that Rachel and Clayton will get together. I think that they can make it. I think so too. There's also rumblings that Pilot Pete is going to come to Paradise because he Whoa. broke up. Um, who was the girl that he has dated? Oh, Kelly. Kelly, yeah. So he has dated Kelly like three times now, and they announced it's quits. And so now there's speculation that Pete might come to the island. Okay. Which he's messy. Okay, but I'm here for that. Do I need to watch that season for the potential of him being on there, I or mean, is that season no good? His season was kind of just frustrating because of the dynamic of him and like the top three women and like the way it all plays out. I don't need kind of frustrating. Okay. So maybe not. I don't know. It wasn't one of my favorite seasons. Um, Also, Hannah Brown comes back to his season, which is weird. Uh, Okay. Um, That's an interesting bit of tea. That could be fun. Or Michelle. Michelle would be amazing. But I don't think she's going to okay, come back. Though. I know. I actually thought about this. I, I, I didn't want to put it out there, but you did, so we can talk on it. I think she has been through so much with this show that, like, if she wants to do that, good for her. And I would love to see Michelle come back and do Paradise. But also, I just don't know. I don't think she would. Come who back. even in all of? I mean, we haven't met Charity's guys, and there there will be some of them on Paradise, right? However, I as of right now, I can't really envision her with anybody that I that we know from Bachelor Verse right I now. Mean, I know that Rodney was on her season, but maybe she could just love Rodney. <laughs> Because I just want Rodney to be in love. There you go. There you go. That could <laughs> actually in that interview, she did talk about being in touch with Rodney. Like I think they do have a friendship. So well, I think if it Rodney hasn't happened, and Nate are like roommates slash tra- doing family vacations together. That's really awkward. They, she can't date him. You're right. She can't. Yeah. So as of right now, I just don't see anybody that. She yeah, could end Michelle, up with. Don't come back. Don't come back. Don't yeah. Come don't come back. back. I think she she's too. She's above it. But I think that there could be people in the Bachelor verse for Rachel and Gabby and Clayton. I I don't know. Having them all on the island at the same time would be crazy. Okay, but they've all been very flirty on Instagram together. 
So Gabby and Rachel have now both posted photos of the dress that they wanted to be proposed in. And I don't know if Clayton said anything to Rachel, but he's been in, he's like actually hung out with Rachel. They've been in communication, but then he was being kind of flirty with Gabby in the comments of her post about the dress. And she was like, kind of like flirty ribbing. So I think things might be okay there. (laughs) Yeah. Maybe um, Rachel and Gabby season gave them the perspective to like, have a little more grace for Clayton. Yeah, like, okay, this guy went through, we went through, like, this shit's crazy. <laughs> yeah, it's, <laughs> it's hard to not be a complete mess. Yeah, but I don't know. It'll be a good time. I mean. What if Susie was on the island or on the island, on the beach? On the island. <laughs> <laughs> on our island. island. I don't, I don't, Susie's great. I don't have, Susie would be fine. But what if Susie was there and Clayton was there? They seemed also, she was posting, I get all my my gossip from Instagram, but she was posting about Clayton's book, and I think they have an- So they support each other? They do support each other. So it seems like everybody, and this is why I think Clayton, why I say I think Clayton's done the work, (laughs) is that like, all the women he's really like legitimately crossed don't have him on their Will murder list. That's fair. And so I kind of feel like- you know, he's clearly, he's done something to get off those, those shit lists. And I buy it because Gabby and Rachel had no qualms talking mad shit on him. So I think, I think he's done some stuff. I think he's good. Hopefully. Okay. Well, we could talk about this forever. I we can. Like we probably should let you guys go. <laughs> if you've made it this far, thank you. Um. Okay. So the loose plan for the next three weeks are... Three episodes on Vanderpump Rules, and then we'll probably do an episode on Charity's Men yeah. the week before her season starts. That sounds so great to me. So we would love your feedback on the Love is Blind and the v- um, Vanderpump Rules stuff just because it's nice to know who's enjoying it, who's listening to it. Should we do it again? Should we not? Um, honestly, I don't know if we'll do Love is Blind again, but uh, yeah, like we're open to doing other shows like that so yeah we just need to kind of know where where our audience is and what yeah what people think so. but thank you so much for listening and being a part of 20 episodes hell yeah if you were listen to just one we appreciate you yeah we really do so thanks everybody okay love you bye, bye. drama bonded is produced and hosted by jessica brumbaugh and mandy booth our production manager and editor is solomon brumbaugh Our theme music is by Joe Waters. You can find more of his music streaming on the EP Jupiter Daywatch. Music vocals by Mandy Booth. Graphic designer is Pigeon House. And special thanks to Solomon, Joe, and Juan for all of your support and help getting this podcast off the ground. Thank you.